Greetings, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about two things. I'm going to be doing my year review of 2020, so I'm going to go through all my stats for 2020 and the breakdown of what I read. I'm also going to be recapping of what my goals for 2020 were and whether I met them or not. And then I'm going to be introducing my goals for 2021. Again, this is a video that I probably would have filmed earlier in the year, but I've been on a break. If you want to know a bit more about that, go back and watch my December wrap up that I will have already posted. So without further ado, I'm just going to get into the stats and we've got my notebook here which is very pretty I love it <laughs> according to my spreadsheet I read 119 books in 2020 if you look at my goodreads it will say 118 that's because one of the books I read sometime in the middle of the year was a very short story which was available on an author's website and it had been on goodreads that was how I found out about it but it's now not on goodreads anymore but the whole of my stats are based on me having read 119 books so we're gonna go with that because otherwise the maths doesn't work out. We're sticking with 119. And if I'd realised that, because I was looking at the Goodreads number, not in my spreadsheet, at the end of December, I would have tried really hard to read one more book and make it to 120, but never mind. So I read 119 books in 2020. Now, one stat that I had been meaning to include every month and I kind of stopped around the time that I moved in the autumn because just everything was all over the place was the amount of books on my TBR and whether how that was going. I will tell you now, my Goodreads to read list, my TBR at the start of the year was on 593. At the end of the year it had gone up very slightly, it had gone up to 597. One of my goals, I'm going to talk about this a bit more later, had been to get that down. Clearly that didn't happen, but it didn't go up as much as it could have done considering the number of books I bought last year. I actually stopped keeping track again around the time that I moved because yeah everything was just all over the place. I mean we all lived through 2020. <laughs> you all know how messy it was. I also did unhaul a lot of books which probably helped and I did read, as I said, I did read quite a lot. The majority were not from my own TBR but I'm still very pleased that that didn't go up as much as it could have done. I'm not entirely sure what all of the books I gained were added but now a lot are in storage so that figure is not entirely accurate, I can only apologise. Yeah so that wasn't as bad as it could have been. Again I'm going to talk about this more but I definitely do need to get that number down. The total number of pages I read according to my account was 34,165 pages which gave me an average book length of 287 pages which is pretty good. Actually that is fairly standard. Most of the books I read are around the 300 page mark probably. The shortest book I read I think was that one that I just mentioned that was taken off a good read so that was called Galloway by Lauren James and it's, it was a very short story from the Next Together universe. And I think the longest book I read, I'm just trying to look back, pretty sure it was Duck's New Berryport by Lucy Elman and that was just over a thousand pages. I only started doing my book accounts part way through the year. This was a new system I introduced to try and help me buy less books because it was getting a bit out of hand. Again, I'm going to talk about this a bit more later, but it really did help. But I can't tell you how much I earned from my reading across the whole year because I only introduced that, I think, in July. In terms of when the books were written, 3% of the books I read were from the 19th century, 25% were from the 20th century, and the majority, 72%, were from the 21st century. I mean, I was reading a lot of new releases, a lot more new releases than I usually would last year, thanks in part to the Space Orange Book Club. So I want to try and read some more older books again, but yeah, it doesn't matter too much. I just find that interesting. Where the books came from, 3% of the books were rereads, 1% were borrowed from friends or family, 32% were borrowed from the library, 30% were from my own TBR, and 34% were new books that I bought within the year of 2020. So that's not too bad, it's fairly even split between borrowed, owned and new. I do want to be reading more from my own TBR, as I said, I mean I'm going to talk about my goals. One of my goals was to read more from my own TBR and I didn't do that, and so that is something I need to address. I was buying a lot of books though and so it is pretty good that I was reading a lot of the books I bought as well. Across the year 3% of the books I gave 2 stars, I gave 10% 3 stars, I gave 56% 4 stars and 31% 5 stars. The vast majority of the books I read I really enjoyed. There were only a couple that I really didn't enjoy and yeah so I'm pretty happy with that as a rating. In terms of the format of the books 
the vast majority were paperback, 67%, so two thirds were paperback, 21% were hardback. Again, that came down to buying more new releases. They're more likely to be in hardback. And then these are the interesting ones. So 1% 1 were graphic novels, which I don't really read very many of them at all. So that's not surprising. 2% were audiobooks. That's something I started to get into a little bit more last year. 9% were ebooks. And if you'd asked me a year ago, I wouldn't have said that was going to happen. But between libraries being shut and not being able to buy books as much, I was borrowing quite a lot of books from the library as ebooks. And so I started to really get into them. And actually, that's something you will be seeing me talk about more in the future is I am reading a lot more ebooks now and enjoying them more. It did help as well, particularly this month. This is starting on this year, but I did get a new iPad. So it's a bit easier to read them on that because my old iPad was really out. In terms of the age the books were aimed at, again this is not very surprising. 6% of the books are aimed at children, so that's middle grade but also younger than middle grade. I'm a bit blurry on where the line is and I, t I don't read a lot of children's or middle grade books so I just kind of have bunched them in together. 17% were for a YA audience and 77% so the vast majority were for an adult audience. So I read quite a number of different genres. I think just the majority were fantasy and then Christian nonfiction and then it looks like contemporary nonfiction and sci-fi were all about equal. So actually it looks like fantasy and Christian nonfiction were equal as well. Those were probably my top five genres, but I also read classic, dystopian, essay collections, gothic horror, gothic romance, historical fiction, historical fantasy, magical realism, memoirs, mysteries, a picture book I guess. <laughs> I don't remember, what, I know I do remember what book that was. Plays, poetry, science fantasy, short story anthology and urban fantasies. A real mix of genres there, but unsurprisingly Christian nonfiction and fantasy were my highest. Non-fiction, science fiction, fantasy are generally my go-to. Contemporary was higher than I would have thought actually. I would usually say that I would read more historical fiction than contemporary fiction, but it's why it's really interesting to have started tracking these stats. Last year was the first year that I went into this much detail about my stats and that actually really surprises me. That's pretty cool. Let's talk about my reading challenges next. These come into my goals a little bit as well. I set myself five challenges for the year. The first one was the Indie Challenge which was hosted by Ninja Book Box and this was to read books from independent publishers or self-published books and I read 51 books for that. So I think I was aiming for, the goal was to read a third a third of all the books I read to be indie publishers. This was actually 42% of the books I read were from independent publishers. So that is more than what the goal was. So that I'm really happy with. And the next challenge was to start on your shelfathon, which was hosted by a blog called The Quiet Pond. It is not something I read regularly. I had some interaction with it about the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, which is how I heard about this challenge. I really enjoyed the challenge, but didn't do as well on it as I would have liked. So I read 32 books for that challenge. It was basically reading your backlist books. That was any books bought before, I think it was middle of December, 2019. And so, as I mentioned, one of my goals was to try and read more of my own TBR and I didn't do brilliantly at that. So it was 32 books. It was about a third of all the books I read were from that own TBR. My next challenge was to read the oldest books on my TBR and I read five of those. I'm gonna do a full update on this in another video soon where I'm gonna go through, cause I unhauled quite a lot of those books as well without reading them or like I read the first chapter and realized they weren't for me. I got through more of that list than it looks like from that stat. And also that's gonna be another goal for this year. So I will be going into more detail in another video about that. For Read Around the World, my goal was to read 12 books and I read 10. It's actually the same amount as I read in 2019. And that's for new countries, countries that I hadn't read a book by an author from that country before. So I did read more books from other authors of other nationalities and that's why I started tracking that as a separate statistic but for new countries that I hadn't ticked off already that was 10 and then I completed six series as well and again I'm going to do because completing series is another goal for this year I'm going to do another video about that. Nationalities I'm not going to go into <laughs> a lot of detail I'm going to put up the picture so you can see the breakdown. For most of the nationalities I read one maybe two books from authors of that nationality, but the vast majority were from American and British authors. And that is just because that's what publishing does. So it's another thing I'm hoping to keep trying to vary that up a bit more, but it doesn't surprise me that those have dominated. I was really trying to read 
more diversely. And I had these diversity markers that I picked for myself in the beginning of the year. One of those, and kind of the most important one for me, was the author ethnicity. So I was trying to read more authors of colour. I hadn't particularly set a goal for this. Last year I was just interested to see what the breakdown was for my reading, although certainly after the events in the summer with Black Lives Matter, I was actively trying to read more authors of colour. So the start at the end of the year, 67% of the books I read were from white authors and 29% were from authors of colour. 4% were books which had multiple authors and I think, although I'm not entirely sure because I haven't gone back and checked, I think I only labelled it as that if there were a mixture of ethnicities among the authors. Certainly that is what I'm doing this year. I can't remember for all of the books I read last year that I labelled as this whether that was the case or not. So that is less than a third of all the authors that I read being authors of colour. That is something that I'm going to be looking at this year and I'm going to mention that again a little bit later when I go into my goals. In terms of the gender of the authors, 64% were cisgendered women which I'm, I'm really happy that I'm reading majority women. 29% were cisgendered men, 4% were multiple authors, again that was if the authors were of different genders, 2% were non-binary authors and 1% were transgendered men. And I'm going to talk about that again a little bit more later in my diversity goals. I'm a bit unhappy that I've read so few books from transgender or non-binary authors. I'm happy that I'm reading more women than men, but I want to be reading more transgender and non-binary authors as well. For my author diversity markers, for my author diversity across the year I read 38 books from authors of a marginalised ethnicity, 15 books by authors from the LGBTQIA plus community, 7 books from authors with a disability, 13 books from authors who have openly talked about their experience of mental illness, and 5 books from authors with a neurodivergence, and then 4 books I've listed as other diversity. I'm not quite sure what I mean by other diversity but I'll just have included it as if I think I should be tracking it. So that's not too bad, a couple of those I want to be working on again and I'll go into that a little bit more detail when I go into my goals. In terms of character diversity I'm actually pretty happy with these stats. 48 of the books featured characters of a marginalised ethnicity, 31 featured books from the LGBTQIA plus community, 31 again featured characters with a disability, 45 of the books had themes to do with mental health and 23 of the books featured characters with a neurodivergence and two of the books featured another diversity, again I don't know what I meant by that. I'm not entirely sure it's helpful to have that as a stat. Right, so I think that's all the stats. So just to recap, my goals for 2020, I had some bookish goals and some channel goals. So my first bookish goal was to have a low buy of books. That clearly did not happen. I mean, global pandemic. <laughs> and I buy books when I'm stressed. So I was stressed buying a lot of books last year. My second goal I've already mentioned was to get my TBR down. Again, that didn't happen. It went up very slightly. It's something that I'm going to be looking at again this year. Read Around the World, again, I've already mentioned. I was aiming to read 12 and I read 10. So it's not too far off. I was aiming to read three books in French in the year and I read two. So again, not quite there, but I'm not gonna beat myself up over it. I've already mentioned as well that reading books from independent authors and publishers. My goal was for a third of all of the books I read to be from independent authors or publishers and actually it was at 42% so I really did smash that one. I'm really happy with that. And then I wanted 75% of the books I read to be from my own TBR but only 30% were so I really did not meet that goal at all. For my channel goals, one goal I set myself was to figure out getting some lights and sorting out my filming location so I do still have the lights. I've moved house since then and I have less space. I'm in a shared house now where I was in my own place before. So I'm just doing the best I can with filming location. I am sitting in front of my bookshelf but you can only really see the DVDs on there but never mind. I had the goal to upload twice a week. I uploaded quite inconsistently but actually again that was a response to what was going on in my life. Moving and global pandemic and various other things so again I'm not going to beat myself up over it. I had the goal to improve my thumbnails and I think I have. I'm a lot happier with them than I was. It's probably something I will play around with a bit more in the future. And then my final goal was to caption all my videos. Every new video that I uploaded last year had captions on it, which I'm really proud of. Didn't have time to go back and caption some of my older videos, but apart from there's like maybe two or three review videos that still get views sometimes, most of my older videos don't really get a lot of views, so I'm not too worried about that. Okay, as for my goals for this year, 
I've got kind of three categories. So the first one are sort of general bookish goals or reading goals. The first one is to stick to my book budget. And so this was a system I introduced partway through the year where I'd earn money to spend on books from what books I read. For every book that was under 500 pages, I would earn one pound. For books between 500 and 1,000 pages, it would be two pounds. And for books over 1,000 pages, it would be three pounds. And then at the end of the month, I would have that money to be able to spend on books. And actually, mostly, I have stuck pretty well to that in terms of just books for general reading. Where I fell down slightly was that I started a uni course and whereas I probably could have borrowed some of the books from the university library, I used it as an excuse to buy those books for myself and I didn't necessarily need to buy all of the books I bought for uni, but I did and I didn't count them, I don't count them as part of my budget because I, I need them for uni. So I am going to be looking at that a little bit this year. I'm going to stick to the book budget system because it does seem to be working. It means I think more before I just randomly order loads of stuff. I have been a little bit wanting to stress buy books recently again and Again, I've used that as an excuse to buy books for my course because with lockdown, it's a lot harder to get books out from the uni library. I have also bought a couple of books that are ones that I borrowed from the library but really enjoyed that I want to reread. I haven't counted them, but mostly it is helping me buy less books and that is a positive thing. So I'm gonna stick to that and I will update every month how that is going as well. I have the goal again to try and get my TBR down. Last year I was aiming for 75%, that seems, like it was a bit unrealistic really. This year I've lowered my sights a little bit. I'm aiming for at least 50% of the books I read to be from my own TBR. This is taking into account that I'm having to read a lot of books for uni, for my course, and some of them will be borrowed from the library, some of them will be ebooks from our library ebook service, and so they're less likely to be books that I own. It's also bearing in mind that I have recently joined NetGalley and so I am going to be reviewing books and they're going to be ebooks. So again, they're not going to be from my own TBR. I'm also trying to use the library where I can. So I'm affiliated with several library services from where I used to live and from where I'm currently living. And so I use both of those services to read ebooks as well now, which is stopping me from buying books. So taking all of that into account, I thought aiming for half of the books to be from my own TBR would be really helpful, would help me to get that number down. I'm still going to be buying some books new and I'm hoping to try and keep up with reading them so it justifies buying them but we'll see how that goes. So as I just mentioned I've also recently joined NetGalley. I joined it kind of in the middle of December and requested quite a few books on there so I have quite a few books on my NetGalley shelf to read. I also have a number of physical books that authors have sent me that I haven't reviewed yet so I'm aiming to read and review at least two books per month and they will mainly be I will do video reviews of them so look out for lots of reviews coming your way soon. Depending on the genre, some of them I will re review on my blog, but I don't update that very frequently, and it's more of a theological blog than a book blog. So kind of some of the ones that I'm reading that are maybe more from that Christian nonfiction genre will be reviewed there, but most of them will get a review or their, their own review or a shared review, depending on what's going on on this channel. I've got the goal again to read some more books from from the oldest on my TBR list. I'm gonna be filming a video soon that will tell you more about that. I think I already mentioned that. So I'm aiming for at least one a month from that list and I will be filming an update about that very soon. Read Around the World, again, I've got the goal of one book per month to try and get through some more countries for that. And again, that will be as it was last year. The books that count for that will be books from countries where I haven't read a book from an author from that country before. So I will be trying to vary up my author nationalities as well in general. So last year I had the goal of reading more books in French and I do still wanna try and read books in French, but I'm also trying to learn German at the moment. So I want to start trying to read books in German. And then I also realized that I used to read quite a lot of translated books and I haven't done so much in the last year. So I want to start reading more translated books again. So I set the goal of one book per month that's either translated or written in a foreign language, so not written in English. Yeah, so to try and read some more, like practice my reading skills in other languages, but also experience books from other languages and cultures as well. And then my final goal is, there are 10 series that I want to finish this year. And again, I'm gonna be doing a, a video about that and listing out what those series are and how much I have to read for each of those series. Whether I will actually complete all of them, I don't know, but look out for that video coming soon. Okay, my next little chunk of goals are to do with author diversity. So 
I've put here, I want to keep reading more indie books. This isn't a specific challenge in itself this year. The indie challenge I don't think is running this year. But I do want to try and maintain reading a lot of books from independent publishers. So it may mean for 40 to 50% of the books I read to be from independent publishers or self-published authors. In my stats I mentioned that I was quite disappointed with the number of books from trans or non-binary authors that I read. So I want to get that number up. I'm aiming to read at least 10 books. That doesn't sound like a lot, but because I'm not, I'm trying not to buy new books I'm mainly either reading ones that I can get from the library or ones that I already own that I haven't read yet which is why that number is not as high as it could be but it is a lot higher than what I managed to read last year and that's just something like with the goal of trying to read books that I already own it's hard to read books by authors from identities if I don't own them if that makes sense so I'm working on that and every year I'm going to try and increase that number a little bit but for this year I've set the goal of at least 10. And then in terms of ethnicity of authors last year as I mentioned 30% of the books were from authors of colour I want to get that up to at least 40% this year preferably 50% but again it comes down to what books I already own and what is available to me to borrow online. We will see how that goes again long term I would like my books to be at least 50-50 authors of colour and white authors. Again, it's something that I'll probably have to build up to, so we're aiming for at least 40%, preferably 50% of that. I've decided to focus on those two author diversity goals this year, and then next year I'll look at some of the other markers that I've been trying to increase and see if I can increase some of those other ones as well. And then for my channel goals, I want to continue tracking my stats, particularly looking at those diversity stats. I really enjoy making those stats video. I know some people have said they really enjoy watching them. I know it's not for everyone, but I just really enjoy keeping track of all those statistics so I'm going to keep doing that. I'm not going to set myself an upload goal this year, I'm not aiming for a certain number per week, I'm not even aiming to upload on certain days, I just want to keep making videos and uploading them and not put that pressure on myself. I think I'll get more enjoyment out of it if I'm not expecting myself to upload at a certain date or time so I'm taking that pressure off myself but I will be continuing to caption all all my videos and the moment I do this myself I use the auto generated captions and then I edit them. I may look into some of my friends use a website that does it for you and they seem to it seems to be very effective so I might look into doing that it would depend a little bit on the cost of that. So two goals that are quite loose goals that I don't know whether I'll manage to do them this year or not. They're both things that I mentioned in previous videos last year but never quite managed to do them. So one is that I was given for my birthday um, the poster you can see there 100 book bucket list and so I want to start up a book club to read through some of the books on that list that I haven't read yet. This term is looking fairly busy so it might be something that I look at doing towards the summer. Whether I will actually find time to do that this year or not I don't know, I just thought it might be quite fun. And similarly I'd love to host a readathon other than the Christmas readathon that I do every year and again I might look at doing something in the summer, it may just be we do Christmas in July readathon or something like that or I have an idea for a, another readathon that's a bit more complicated so it's whether I have the time or the energy to actually figure out what that will look like or not but that may happen again sometime in the summer. And then finally I just want to get back into watching more booktube because it's something that I used to do a lot and I've just been really busy the last couple of months and have kind of lost touch a little bit with the book tube community I mean I have a really good group of friends in the Space Sirens book club we have a little group chat on whatsapp and we really enjoy that and I feel like I've like actually really made some friends in the booktube community this year which was something I'd never quite felt until kind of last summer that I was entirely fitting into the community but now I have this lovely group of friends we have a Space Sirens discord channel as well which I will link for you if you want to join that and hear more about what we're reading what we're talking about but I do want to get back into watching and commenting on people's videos even if it's just dropping a few emojis so that they know that I've watched the videos because even when I was watching lots of booktube I never felt confident enough to comment so I would like to just show people that I'm enjoying their content even if it's just by giving them a love heart emoji. So I think that is it. I've been talking for a really long time. Well done if you've made it this far. You can give me some sort of happy face emoji to tell me that you have sat through this really long video. Hopefully when I edit it it won't be quite so long. We will see how that goes. But yeah, let me know what you think of my goals. What are some of the things that you're focusing on with your reading this year? Have you set yourself some goals? Yeah, have a chat to me down in the comments about some of the stuff you've been reading, what you're aiming to to read this year. Yeah, you can also like this video if you like it, subscribe if you haven't already, and you can also follow me on my social media. All that information will be in the description box below for you. But that's it for today, so thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.